Rescue Data and Repair, my name is Dr. Ben. Happy welcome to the next video. And don't forget to wear your glasses if you are working uh, with smartphones. And we are still at zero, so full short. And now it's up to the thermal cam. So let's have a look under the microscope, people. You see? that the pads look all pretty okay. So, let's go. We have an iPhone 12 mini. Data is important, function is important. Customer needs data and a working phone. So, I just heated it up on a preheater. And now we need to separate the screen from the housing. And this is something we do by using the Refox RS50. This tool takes about 60 US dollars and it works like a charm. Oh, this phone was already opened before, but not here, not at us. We see that the EMI shield here is missing. We have a lot of dirt here on top. So I would say we first check directly without doing anything. So the phone doesn't boot up. The customer says nothing works, okay? So we check in diet mode directly at the battery FPC for the values. One probe to ground. And we have a full short, okay? So we have a full short. I show to you what we what we did measure here. So we have um, we have bad VCC here. We have no names on the 12 mini, um, but it's similar to the 12 Pro. So we just choose 12 Pro, and I can show it to you. So then we see uh, the names of the lines. So we have bad VCC. Bad VCC is connected to VDD main over this resistor here. So um, if we have a short on VDD main, we will measure a short on bad VCC too. So that's pretty important because mostly we have an issue on VDD main in this case, yeah? So I would say we just do that like this here and then we just disconnect the screen, disconnect the front flex, everything, take out the screen and again um, for you, to understand, in the newer generations of phones, we have a sandwich board system. So we have a top layer um, with uh, the AP, the application processor unit, and um, all them parts we need there for data. And we have a bottom layer, which includes the RF circuit, radio frequency circuit, like ever. And um, if we have a short, on a line like VDD or another line, we need to separate the top layer from the bottom layer to see if we have the short on the top side or if we have the short on the bottom side of the board. And um, then we can solve the issue and we can get access to data again and we can get a working phone again like ever. But diagnostics in this case, it's um, just like it takes more time than on older generations, like um, for example, the iPhone 7, because we had an, just a normal board with a, a top and a bottom and done, and not a top layer board, a middle frame, a bottom board, and things like that. So it's completely different, but it's pretty important that we all need to understand and need to learn that these new generations of phones are just on the market now and we just have to go with them. We, we, can't, we can't change anything on that. So the, the, the manufacturer of the phone builds the phones like this. And if he builds the phones like this, we need to learn how we can repair these boards or how we can save data out of these boards. That's our job. So, and... Um, so for us, it's not like uh, crying and saying, oh no, it's, it's more work than before. We just need to accept that. We need uh, to see, okay, it's more work now, but um, 
if it's more work, we need to take more money from the customer. That's uh, another thing. A lot of people uh, just don't understand um, that you can't work for nothing. Okay. So if a customer sends a device here and it's uh, uh, really a hard case and he has to pay uh, 3,500 euro for data recovery in, in a hard case. So um, that can happen really just can happen. So it's always corresponding to the case. Which steps do I need to go to get access to the important data? Which steps do I need to go to repair the phone? And the time which I use for repairing the phone needs just to be paid. So, and if I got cases which take money and don't need as much time, who pays me for the time I needed um, to learn to fix this, uh, this issue in, in less time. You know what I mean? So if I, if I uh, need 10 minutes for a fix, who pays me for the 10 years, which I needed to learn to fix that in 10 minutes or not. So that's something you always keep, need to keep in your mind and never forget that. Okay. So now we need to take away the clue. And now we can separate the board after we get out the clue over the FPCs. Okay, now we need a preheater like this. And we need to get the board into the preheater, okay? So this is the MS1, in my opinion, the best preheater which you can get on the market at the moment. So we heat up the board and while we heat up the board, we just help with some hot air. Now we just need to lift up the board. Let's have a look. Come on, we start at this point here. Done. Looks pretty good, are not? And to don't get too much heat for too long time on the bottom layer, directly put the bottom layer away from the preheater. So now we have the top layer with the uh, CPU. Other side we have the NAND, then we have Logic EEPROM and a lot of other shit. And here we have the bottom layer, including the SIM reader on the iPhone 12 mini. So now we just clean here one time. It's just something I always do. Then we just take again, our multimeter, go to diet mode, fix the probes and do measurement. Okay. And we are still at zero. So full short. And now it's up to the thermal cam to help us on our diagnostics. So we connect our board to 4.2 volts or to 4 volts like ever on 5 amps directly to our power supply. And then we just need to have a look. Can you see that? Just one cap. Okay, here underneath the CPU, directly over a coil, there is one cap. Go straight under the microscope. Okay. 
Um, this cap is the issue. Okay, so just one cap, it's the whole device. Now, if we just do measurement again, we should see a good reading for VCC main. But before I do this, I just want to recommend you something. Flötzinger Hell, the best beer in the world. Okay, we now just need to. Oh, and we have a reading T, um, 330 millivolts on our battery connector. That's pretty fine. So we can reconnect the both halves back together. Do you people want to see a reball of the board? Tim. Yes, I've seen it a hundred times, but it's so exciting. Really want to see? Uh, you don't need to see that again. You don't need to see that again. If you want to see a board reball on this generation again, just watch our YouTube channel. So I showed that in a lot of videos. So you can see board reball for this generation in multiple videos on our channel. So in this case, I would say separation process was pretty good. Okay, so we had no issues. We could lift up the board. We will control the board with our eyes, with our eyes under the microscope in a second. And then we decide if we need to do reborn. Okay, Tim? Yes, sir. Okay. So let's have a look under the microscope, people. You see that the pads look all pretty okay. We have rest of solder on it, and here we have solder too. So we didn't lose anything. What about here? Some dirt. Okay. What is pretty important if we want to get the boards back together, the top layer and the bottom layer? Then it's important that all is clean. So. They can go back together without issues. And then you can get this down without any problems. We have spaces between so we can sit them. Not a problem. So we go to 12 mini. We go to 230. And we add flux. Unfortunately, just a short on VDD. But I think that's pretty okay. Because you see how you can easily analyze the situation and solve it. So we get top layer back here. and we add some hot air. Okay, this looks pretty good. Get this down here. Yeah, it moves. Moves here too. Okay, then we just get some weight on it and remove power. Okay, so the weights take the heat directly out the system. Okay, the heat goes directly to the weights. 
we need to see that the board is pretty straight adjusted. And as long as you see in straight adjusted board, so I can't move it anymore at all now because the weights take the heat and the solder cools down faster. So we wait a short time. After that, we just get the board out and then we will see if this motherboard wants to boot again and if we can get access to the important data again. What do you think, Tim? I think Dr. Ben needs to hear to the board. Please help me, Dr. Ben. Oh, the heart beats again. I say you the heart beats again. We need to get the pizza out of the oven. And like this. Fresh pizza! <laughs> It is still, I just need to, to get a little bit orientation on it. So we had, we had a lot of heat on the bottom. So it was still a little bit melted. And I will speed that up now and just get it out again. I always want to have things perfect, okay? And to get things perfect, sometimes you need to do it twice. No, not a problem. So we just do it here. Yeah. Yeah, it moves perfect. We already had the weights on, so it's pretty flat here. And you see the board? The board just really safe seat that's what i what i said before this looks good so we just wait 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 then we place a weight here place a weight here but it looks good yeah. it's straight you see the balls all pretty well connected okay other side just going up with the microscope and here you can see perfectly in this area all the bolts even in that area here on the top here are pretty well connected you see that's how it needs to look like so pretty cool dr ben needs to take his glasses onto the head and we need to add the board into the housing and we need to connect some of the FPCs here. And now we need to check if we have a booting phone again. What do you think, Tim? Of course, Dr. Ben is broke. Okay, if Dr. Ben does this, you think it works? Oh. Okay, pretty nice. So, let us take charging cable. I don't know if the battery is charged. And let us check the consume. It looks pretty good. Jumps to 100. And boom! We have an apple. Let's go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Dr. Ben, we have success again. Tim will blur this out. Wait a second until we see something on the screen. And boom! We are back to life again with access to all the important data with a working phone at all so thanks a lot for watching and uh, dr ben you will see me again goodbye